Gold Rush the game is an indie sim developed by Code Horizon and based on the Discovery Channel series. Just like in the TV series, in the game the main character sets out to catch his luck by the tail, keeping his way to a small town around which several gold mines are located. In his pocket are a couple hundred dollars, a flashlight and the keys to an old pickup truck and a shovel. The rest you have to get with your own hands. The town despite its backwater appearance has everything you need for a gold prospector. A bank where you can get a business loan, rent or buy land and sell the finished gold bars, stores for machinery and equipment and finally a gas station and a blacksmith. In fact, you can go straight to the mine leasing the land, the minimum necessary to work can be found on the spot, but it's foolish of course to start in such a way washing out literally separate grains of sand by hand. Uh, with the Razor's sketchy guide, the developers explain that the possible ways of mining gold are divided into three groups, the first of which is completely manual and the rest are automated through the use of various machines and equipment. For the youngest ones, there are step-by-step -step explanation up to the instructions of what and where to buy it, accompanied by a video of the actual mining process. But in principle, you can think of everything on your own, especially if you have watched the TV series, what's going on in the game looks quite logical and realistic. You wash some gold by hand, cash it in, buy better equipment, wash more, spend it again on shopping at the local store, go back to the mine. The gameplay evolves in a similar spiral from manual labor using running water and a trade to entire gold mining complex with a large fleet of machines and equipment that's the way anyone can go. Gold Rush immediately tries to make a name for itself as a true simulator. It starts from the moment the player gets into his car to drive into town. The ignition is started with a separate button and when parking you must spot the car on the parking brake, otherwise the pickup can roll away under the hill. Don't forget to switch off the engine and headlight, full tends to run out and the battery is discharged. There is even a definitional lock but, this, but the speeds switch by themselves for some reason. The first visit to the equipment store is also surprising. After selection goods and paying at the checkout, you begin the usual search for inventory where, as is customary, the purchase should appear, but inventory, as we remember, in the game is not at all. Everything purchased is uh, neatly stacked at the entrance to the store on a special platform, and each item must be taken in the hands and dragged to the back of the pickup truck. Again, there are no menus and inventory windows of the machine, things literally have to be thrown into the back of the truck as you can, sometimes by picking up the fall overboard. It seems to be a trifle, but this attitude to such a seemingly elementary task is very tempting. If you have a lot of bulk purchase in the store, the process of loading turns into a kind of Tetris in first person. Good thing that you also can buy trailers, thanks to which you no longer have to think to make a second trip or try to somehow push all the goods into the truck at once. A similar principle of do-it-yourself in the gold rush is the cornerstone of the whole game. The equipment and tools have to be loaded and driven to the mine site, they are placed in a convenient place to work, assembled wires and hoses connected all by hand, mind you. Gold will not pocket by itself, you have to dig out the rock with a shovel or excavator, then clean the ore and wash out the remaining product with a tray or wash table. Even the simplest process chain allows for minimal optimization to increase labor efficiency. What to say about when a real set of equipment requiring water and electricity in is under control? The installation and proper placement of wires and hoses alone are worth a lot. We must also remember that any techniques requires consumable and can fail. Repairs and the replacement of spare parts also fall on the player's shoulders. When everything is ready to work, it's again necessary to sit down at the levers 
of the excavator or front-end loader and start the hard work, the result of which will be another couple of ounces of precious metal. Thanks to the performance of all the operations manually, the effect of the presence is so strong that the routine activity becomes very, very interesting. When you are loading another ton of rock into the sifter or trying to figure out the tangled wires and suddenly catch yourself thinking that you don't care about the bad graphic because the game is worth it. Gold Rush the game leaves you with mixed feelings. At the beginning it seems to be incomprehensible and unslightly but they really get carried away but as soon as you get into all the intricacies you understand that there is nothing more to do. The concept of the game is very promising and the developers have several ways of further development.